on the eve of a strong black president, Barack Obama. If you're black, jump back. If you're white, you're right. If you're red, go ahead. If you're yellow, be mellow. <laughs> Something like that. There's so many variations of these kinds of rhymes um, that I was so happy to see Reverend Lowry bring this into the inauguration. I was on my... <laughs> I was on the floor laughing, um, but laughing because it's old school. Um, some people uh, see it as the, uh, the race card. Obama's in office and now they're talking about race. Yeah, Obama's in office. And finally, we're talking about race. And I like that there's that sensibility about race. What does that mean? You know, if you're black, you know, you don't have to get back. If you're red, you can get ahead. If you're yellow, you can be mellow. You know what I mean? If you're white, you can actually do what's right. That's different than how the original one went. And what I like about it is it brings a kind of sensibility towards race, a sensitivity towards race. It says it, we can talk about race. That's not the race card. Talking about race is not playing the race card. Not talking about race and then whipping it out terrorist, terrorist, or, or even what Miss Hillary did, uh, that is the race card. But talking about race in and of itself is not playing the race card for all you people who are unaccustomed to talking about race. And I don't blame you. I grew up in America too. I know that it's uncomfortable to talk about race to mixed company, but now it's been talked about in a way that we talk about it in behind closed doors. It's been said on the inaugural stage. What more can you say to say that we're past race being a problem and we're getting past racism? We are not post-race. To say post-race means that, um, and race is in the, the kind of ethnic construction, not the, not the biological construction of race, but the ethnic construction of, of race. It says that you can be proud of who you are and the perspective that you and your ethnic background brings to the global stage. But to be ashamed of it, that's the race card. To not talk about it, that's the race card. To pretend that everybody's on the scene. Have you ever noticed that all the people who are saying that, man, I don't see race. I don't go by, I don't see color. I'm colorblind. Well, that's a problem. If you don't see that I'm black, you're stupid. <laughs> if I don't see that you're brown, uh, it's because I'm colorblind and I choose to ignore facts. If I don't choose, if I, if I don't see that you have pink skin and, and pretend not to notice that it has any social implication anywhere in the world, that's ignorance. Now, to let that control me, that's also kind of ignorance. That's stupid. To have, the, to have insight and sight is not ignorant. To talk about race, to experience race, but to experience racism that's a whole different story. And it, it is racist to say that you can't talk about race. That's playing the race card. That's racist. That is internalized racism. And I'll explain to you what that means. It means that you've internalized that any discussion of race um, implies that you're saying that there's something racist. And racist uh, has been internalized to mean white against black has been, not internalized, excuse me, has been reduced to white against black. And it's been reduced to that, um, white against brown, white against yellow, white against, or in places where there is a majority versus a minority, uh, where people have the personal prejudice plus the power uh, to affect and it, the entire destinies of another group of people. So it's not just that I... You know, I live here in India and I think, ooh, you know, Indian people stink and they smell like garlic. Maybe a, maybe a person thinks that, but I don't have the power to, to oppress Indian people based on this prejudice, whether or not I believe that or not. Do you see what I'm saying? And so um, looking at the American government, for example, all those people who are, you know, all the 43 that came before and all their families and their, their, their relatives and blah, blah, blah. They have the power to oppress as individuals, sure, um, but it represents the kind of mass oppression, gender oppression, class oppression. I mean, these were the union busters as much as they were the Klansmen, and I think that that's the difficult part with facing racism. So this brings me back to why I think it's racist to say that we can't talk about racism. 
or we can't even talk about race. You know what I'm saying? It's racist to say you can't talk about race and ra racism. It's because we have to acknowledge the personal culpability, the personal responsibility that individuals were responsible for lynching, for Plessy versus Ferguson, for all those court decisions, for um, implementing laws, poll taxes, I mean, you know, the black codes, all the, the, the reconstruction era um, legal acts that eroded what Abraham Lincoln had envisioned. All of that, these were individual and personal decisions of white people. People who were white, not white people, but individuals who were white. And I understand that that's painful uh, to accept that, wow, many people's ancestors and um, organized around race. And whether or not you'd like it or not, um, those ramifications still affect us today. Uh, they benefit some people in some ways, and they harm others in other ways. Um, but it's not neutral. And to accept that, yeah, I understand that it's painful. But not talking about it is racist. Not talking about it is giving into that power, is letting that have the power over you, as opposed to saying, no, I'm going to take back what racism has done to me and say that I can celebrate race. I can talk about black, get back. Red, all, you know, all these things and that they don't have to scare me. That is what's beautiful. That's what's up.